Testing, testing, one, two, three. We are chatting with Lee Al Bars. Welcome to Chatting with Alia Comedian. Thank you for tuning in. If you are new to this show, guess what? So am I. <laughs> Today we are at my house because I don't do shit. I just be here. And uh, anyway, thank you guys for tuning in to Chatting with Alia Comedian. First of all, shout out to everybody that has took the chance to follow, listen, watch. Um, I do review my analytics or whatever they say and baby y'all been showing out for a girl so thank you shout out to y'all i'm really hype about that um we're gonna jump straight into the podcast because i'm exhausted i've been working and we're gonna talk about me yes that's right you guys we're gonna talk about me now so um this podcast is basically just to kind of give you guys a background of who i am where i came from what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. Um, I do have a list of questions that a lot of people do ask me. So we're going to go over that and we're just going to have a good time. So this podcast today, this episode is just about the background of Aaliyah Comedian um, and the life journey that I've had so far and what I'm looking forward to. Um, so for starters, I am a Leah comedian. I don't have any nails on, so everybody needs to calm down. Okay. And you guys may not think you're not calm, but I can feel the energy already. Now I'm not a psychic, but sometimes I feel like I am. Um, but my name's Aaliyah comedian. I am 33 years old. Um, I, sometimes I'd be thinking I'm like 32, 33. I mean, Anyway, it doesn't matter. I forget sometimes that I'm 33 because it's just like 33. Wow. Um, I was born in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Um, I am a Capricorn, January 14th, 1991. Big Capricorn energy, baby, period. Okay. Big Capricorn energy, which means, you know, we don't play no shit. We don't take no shit. We grind for ours. And that's just that. Okay. Um, I have a mom, <laughs> I have a dad, I don't know my father. And so this pod, this podcast, I'm going to be very honest with you guys about a lot of shit. And, uh, there's going to be some things that I'm going to talk about that nobody knows about. Um, there's going to be some things that I'm going to talk about that you will never hear me say outside of a podcast or off stage. So if you want to catch the tea, baby, you need to be with chatting with Lee. Okay. Bars. Anyway. Um, so a little background. My, my mother's from New York, Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn, New York. Um, she is one of five siblings, five, six siblings. She's the only one living of, out of all her siblings right now. Um, my grandmother had her at a young age. Um, I'm mixed with white and black, but I don't know if I'm really, if it's white, to be honest with you, because we don't know. My grandma never told us who her grandpa father was like she and she took that shit with her to the grave. And she meant that she stood on business. OK, to each its own. Um, my theory of my family, at least from the side that I know, is I think that like, my mom is the whitest child of them all. And I think back in the day, maybe my grandma may have been molested and just didn't want to keep the baby so my great grandmother kept my mom and i feel like my mom has a lot of neglect issues um which we'll get into when i start talking about my childhood you'll you'll start to understand exactly what i'm talking about um which we're, let's just jump into it so as far as i can remember um we lived in the projects uh, my mom likes to say i'm from the p-funk and i will always deny that um, not a P-Funk baby. Okay. Maybe Market Street, but not P-Funk. Like, don't take it there. Okay. Um, but, uh, I, I'm a sibling of five. So I have five siblings. Uh, my mom has four girls and one boy. Um, I remember 
living with my mother most of all of my life up until I was 14, um, maybe 13. So uh, my mom struggled a lot. Uh, she she was in and out of jail from time to time. She was in the streets. She did drugs. Um, she may not like this podcast, but it is what it is. Like, we're not about to hide where I came from. It is, you know, everybody has a background story. Um, so my mom was in the streets at, a, at one point in time. And um, I feel like as a kid, we never really got that much attention from her. Um, so I feel like I was neglected and never given the attention that I deserved as a child. Um, she worked a lot. She did hold it down. Um, and now that I'm older, thinking about the things that she did, I'm like, good job, mom. Good job. You know what I mean? I, I try not to think of the negative things that happen. Um, but I remember living with my mom and we had a stepdad and his name was Reggie. Uh, that's my little sister's dad. And uh, he was very strict, um, but he was also abusive to my mother. Um, so every morning I would watch them fight and like fear for my fucking mom's life because I just was like, why won't you leave him? I never understood um, what was the purpose of getting beat on every other fucking day. Um, but as a kid, you don't you don't understand that. You don't know. Um, so I used to have to go to school and like pray. I don't even know if I was praying. I just know that I was just hoping that my mom was OK and alive when I came home. Um, she got to a point where things really got to the left for her. And I, I never understood what happened or what transition for her. And we never even really spoke about it. I think she just always had a history of drugs and, and so forth. And it was just hard to kind of keep under control. Um, so my stepdad, he was very strict and, and abusive. He never really abused us, <laughs> but he did... I did get whooped. I got whooped a lot of times. I got whooped to the point where I had to go pick out my own branch. Do you remember that? <laughs> Do you remember when your mom was like, go get the branch? Well, my mom never said it, but my stepdad was like, go get that branch. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I picked the thinnest branch. Um, and because of me, like always feeling neglected and that I never got the attention um, that I deserved, I always act out in school anywhere, to be honest with you, because I just... I didn't know. It wasn't like my attention was I'm going to wake up and act out because I'm not getting attention. It was just I was acting out because I wasn't getting any attention. Um, my mom would like lock herself in the room, um, I guess, to get away from us. But she would lock herself in the room. And I'm assuming she did drugs in that, in that timing. Um, I would I would notice like my mom would be so calm and cool and collective when she was high. But if she wasn't high fucking shit went loose up in that house. Okay. Um, so I had a bit of a rough childhood. Um, but like I said, my mom, it was in the streets and every partner that she dealt with was in the streets. Um, one day I remember as a kid, I had opened up the door, um, and someone knocked on the door and you know, I'm a kid. I didn't know. So I said, let me open the door. Um, I opened up the door wrong timing. And someone had a gun to my mom's head. And I was like, whoa, brother, I didn't know what was going on. Um, of course, I got yelled at because, like, I guess she owed somebody money and they were looking for, I don't know, it was a mess. And I was, like, seven, six. So I didn't know what the hell was going on. But that was terrifying for me because I was like, oh, shit, my mom's about to lose her life. Like, it was a, it was a lot going on. But um, as much as my stepfather abused my mom, he did step in to, like, save her life at that moment. And I think at that point, I had, like, a little bit more respect for him. But then as we grew up, I realized, like, you're not my dad. You're not going to tell me what to do. And my mom kind of relied on him. Um, so me and him kind of clashed. And I just got to that age, like, you don't take care of me. You don't do what you're supposed to do. Fuck all y'all. I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's what I did. Um, and my mom was like, bitch, you ain't going to do what you want to do up in this house. I don't think it was her. I think it was my stepdad. But um, one day my mom was like, you got to go. And she was like, you got to pack your shit and you're going downtown to foster care. And I was like, what? Like, you could just do that. And she was so serious. Um, so I, I tore the house up because, bitch, you want to let me go? I'm what? Let's go. So I fucked that house up and I was out the house the next morning. <laughs> like, she was not playing with me. Um, so I went to foster care uh, at the age of like 13. 
Um, I really didn't like being in foster care, of course. Um, but I ended up going to a placement, um, which I ended up doing like a year or two of school. And shout out to my best friend, Portia Jamerson, who's always been there from day one, from before all this shit happened to foster care to all that. Like shout out to her because she used to ride out with my mom um, at least twice a month and come out and see me. Um, and then I ended up being placed into a placement home in York. Um, and I didn't like them. They didn't like me. Um and then about 2006, I ended up going back to Harrisburg um, to a foster family, which I knew this family, actually. Well, I at least knew the wife because she worked at the school that I went to. I used to go to the Braxis school, which is the bad school because I was bad. It wasn't that I was bad. It was just I lacked attention and I just went a different route. Um, I was very wild and everyone was like, you're going to be pregnant. You're never going to graduate. First of all, y'all, I got pregnant at 20 fucking one bitches and I graduated and I'm doing good. Like what? Life is over here. Lifing, lifing for real. First of all, it's definitely lifing, but I'm holding it down. So shout out to everybody that's holding it down. That's been through some shit. You're not the only one. Okay. Um, Growing up in foster care, I ended, like I said, I ended up meeting this lady, Miss Sims. Um, some of you may know her, may not know her. Um, so I've been with her since 2006. And right now we are not, that's a whole nother episode. And we'll get into that when we get into it. But she did hold it down from 2006 up until about two years ago. Um, and, and things happen when you start to grow and you learn yourself and your energy and everything and your spirit, your mental and so forth. You just start to realize certain things you just don't want to be around or be a part of. And like I said, that's a whole nother episode for another time. But I was with that family um, and I had some troubles from time to time. I, I, I remember calling them. I, I remember writing a letter and I was like, listen, I'm running away. I'm out of here. Um, and I ran away. Um, and then I called her and I was like, Hey, can you come get me? <laughs> because, uh, I don't like where I'm at. And, um, I, Hey, um, yeah. So I, I went back. Um, so I didn't run away for too long, probably like an hour or two. It was a fucking mess. I don't know what type of runaway that was, but it didn't last long. Um, so that's kind of like my childhood. Um, some a lot this is something that a lot of people don't know um i was molested when i was a child um by somebody very 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 close to me um we we both were kids um and when we got older eventually i said something about it and they did apologize they was like you know i didn't know any better this is what uh, you know, someone older, closer to me did to me. And I thought it was right. And I don't, I don't really have any issues. And I wouldn't really even say I was molested. I would just say maybe like touched on and shut in a bit. I don't know if that falls under molested or not. Um, but I know it was uncomfortable at, at the time. And um, as I got older and like, you know, we were close, I just, didn't know how to handle it. Um, but I, I now know genuinely that it, they didn't mean it. I don't know. We'll get deep into that later. That's a whole nother situation, but I don't, I don't feel any type of sympathy or anything from it. If that makes sense. Um, I know some people have a lot of trauma behind it, but mine's wasn't like, I don't know how to explain it. I don't, I don't think nobody was in my stuff. I think I just was like touched. Um, and they didn't even know what to touch for real, for real, because they were fucking young. So they weren't even touching the right shit. If we're, so I don't even know if that's what I'm, <laughs> that's, that's something that we just got to talk about. I think that's something I got to sit on and think about, like, do I really want to express that with you guys? How do I even feel about it? I don't know. Um, so that's a background about my childhood. Um, growing up, I graduated. I went to John Harris High School, and then I graduated from Central Dolphin East. I hated Central Dolphin East. I couldn't stand it. I was at their little pep rally screaming cougars all through the hallways because I couldn't stand East. But I actually have a lot of good longtime friends from Central Dolphin East. So shout out to y'all. I love y'all. Um, I feel like we grew up together. 
So that's a little bit about my childhood. Um, you know, watching my mom get beat on. My mom was never really around. Um, you know, I had people touching, you know, I mean, not people, not multiple people, it was maybe one person. Um, you know, I used to watch, I used to be disciplined in a way where it was like, this isn't right. Like I would get disciplined, but my little sister wouldn't get disciplined. Um, we would only be able to go outside if my stepdad had a good beer. If he had a beer, we could ask him anything. He'll let us do whatever. Um, so that's kind of my childhood of where I came from. We can get into deep more with it when we start talking about other topics, which will draw me back to the past. I'm now to a point in my life where I am actually bringing up a lot of things from my past and my childhood just to figure out why the fuck I'm going through half of the shit I'm going through now. And you may be experiencing that. And that's why you're going to be here chatting with the Leah comedian because we're going to get into it. Um, I'm sniffling because I really want to go and spit, but... I'm not going to do that. Every time I talk, it just gets juicy in there. Anyway, um, long story short, uh, I grew up, you know, I got boobs, no butt. Um, I always been like a funny looking kid, not funny looking, but like, I, let's be honest. My nose is not the normal. Um, and people used to call me Miss piggy. And as a kid, I used to feel like I had to fit in with everybody and, my mom never had enough money to buy us Jordans and Nikes and all that fancy shit. Shout out to my brother who, when he was old enough to get a job, he, he held it down for me because I was, you know, the next up. Um, and like, it still wasn't fancy stuff, but he did what he could do. So shout out to my brother, Christopher, for that. Um, I wanted to be down with everybody back in the day. Um, I just felt like I, I wasn't cool enough. Um, and I used to have this one girl who used to just pick on me all the time. And one day we were at the store and I tried to be so nice. I was like, let me buy you a bag of hot Cheetos because I want to buy you a bag of hot Cheetos because I'm a kid. And I'm like, well, what are we going to do? Be friends. I bought her a bag of hot Cheetos. We get across the street. I thought everything was good. And I'm in front of Scott's school um, in Harrisburg off of Dairy Street. And um, I see this boy that I like. And this girl just starts barking and going ham on me. And I'm like, bro, this dude is right here. And I'm not about to act like a bitch. So I whooped her ass. And that day I realized bitch, you either fucking with me or you ain't fucking with me. Like, you know what I mean? I wasn't a big bully, but don't play with me. You know what I'm saying? So middle school is kind of when I was like, oh, bitch, you, you that person. People still try to play with me from time to time because I was a little weird. I used to have an imaginary friend named Emily. So if you know me from back in the day and you know, you know, Emily was fake. I used to sit outside of my mom's bedroom door and talk to Emily. My mom wasn't talking open the door. So, like, who else was I supposed to talk to? Um, so, yeah, I used to have an imaginary friend named Emily. Um, we used to go to school together. We used to do everything. And then eventually I just was like, she died. I did that for attention. I didn't, like, I don't know. It was, I never seen anybody. I never had a friend. Um, when I talked, no one talked back. So that's kind of my my childhood like i said i then ended up going to foster care which i still had that imaginary friend especially when i went to school because it was like a attention thing you know people would be like hey Aaliyah, where's emily and i'm like emily's right here you know like it was just something for me to do so a lot of people if you ever bring me up some people will be like oh emily they some people do call me emily um so if i ever hear emily i know that it's from back in the day um Damn, we're not even halfway. We're almost through this podcast and we're almost through this episode and I didn't even get to the rest of the stuff. This shit gets juicy, okay? <laughs> so I uh, ended up going to foster care, finally graduated. Um, after graduation, I moved out of the foster home because like I'm 18 and you're not about to tell me what to do and all that shit. So I moved with my sister. That didn't go well. So shout out to the foster family because they let me move back. And, um, you know, I got all my shit and got myself together. Um, I did go to school for a little, but nothing, nothing too serious. So I'm still, I'm here. Um, <clears throat> so that's a little bit about who I am um, and where I'm from. A little background of that. Um, 
a lot of people ask me how I started comedy. I know you guys were itching to find that out. Um, I didn't start comedy because I was like, oh my God, I want to be the funniest person in the fucking world. Absolutely not. That was not it at all. I, in fact, I didn't know nothing about comedy, couldn't stand it. And um, as a kid, though, I used to watch Martin, um, the Parkers, um, the Marlon Wayne brothers. Like I used to watch all those shows and I never realized that they were comedy until I started comedy. Um, but I started comedy, um, back in 20, 2019, 2019, I started comedy and, um, how that happened is I had a best friend, my best friend, his name is Papa Desmond Thomas. He was 50 years old. I had to been like 20 something. Um, we were like really close and this was my go-to person. This was the person that I, I, I'd call six in the morning. I know he's going to answer. And I just talked to him about fucking nothing. Um, and we got to a point where we were really close. Like we were, you couldn't, if you've seen him, you've seen me. A um, couple years went on by. He helped me with Aiden, which is my firstborn. I do got two kids. I got two boys. One is 10. The other is four. Um, so Papa helped me raise Aiden a little bit. Um, he was there. Like every time I needed a babysitter, he always was there for me. Um, back in 2019, I was working at Comcast and, um, I was calling my friend and I was like, where, you know, where are you? Where you been? Like, I want to talk to you, you know, and he's been having like a little down moment and he was sick the week before. Um, this was back in February of 2019. And, um, one day I was at work and it's been like three days that passed on. And I was like, I haven't heard from my friend. So I left work on my lunch break and I called my dude and I was like, yo, come get me. Let's go find my friend. Um, we got to his house and his car was there and he worked at the same job as me. But when I emailed his supervisor, they said he hasn't been to work. So I was like, well, what the fuck is going on? Like this nigga better be with some bitch, right? Well, don't y'all know we get to the fucking house. He's not answering the door. The car is outside. I'm a fucking nervous wreck, but I'm not thinking nothing crazy. I'm just like, where the fuck is my friend? The labor lets us go in through the roof. And all I hear is my baby dad say, call the ambulance. By the time he was able to get downstairs and open the door, I seen my best friend laying on top of the floor, on top of the steps, dead, gone. Fuck me up to the point where I just was in such a dark place that I never seen myself coming out of. I never seen myself coming out of this dark place. I was like, what? And then I was even more upset because like, why did I have to find him? So that part of my life really changed the person who I used to be. So I, I tried to grieve. I couldn't. It was a lot going on. Um, my cousin, Nori, Better Minds. So shout out to Better Minds. And you can follow her on all social medias, social, uh, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Better Minds. Um, she called me up and she was like, Cookie, that's my nickname. She said, Cookie you need to come with us to Mexico. And I was like, I'm not coming with you to Mexico. Like I, I'm grieving. I haven't been at work. I can't go with you to Mexico. And she was like, I'm going to pay for it, come through. So I ended up going and um, I had met Jadakiss, which I knew him prior to, but never like for us to have a conversation. So I seen him and he watched me that weekend. And um, on our way leaving, he came up to me. He was like, yo, Cookie. He was like, you can get paid for being you. And I was like, what? He was like, yeah, you can get paid for being you. And he was like, you can get paid for being you. And I just didn't understand that. And then I was like, he was, I was like, what do you mean? He was like, like, you could do comedy, you could do acting. And I'm just like, what are we talking about here? So after that trip, I decided to go look for comedy. I was like, stand up comedy, I guess. I don't know. So I went to look up comedy and I found Comedy Zone in New Cumberland. 
It's at the Boomerang. They have open mic every Thursday. I fucking hate the place nowadays, but it's a good place to start off at. So I went to Comedy Zone on Thursday and I looked up the tickets and it said Just Hilarious was performing. And I said, oh my God, I'm going to fucking open up for Just Hilarious. Don't ask me where the fuck that shit came from. I have no clue. But I was like, I'm about to open up for this girl. Like, I just thought that the open mic was going to be new comics just trying their material before the actual, you know, show starts. Well, here, there was no open mic that night. I damn near got put out of the damn comedy club. I don't even, I'm not going to say damn near. I did get put out of the comedy club. I was tore up to the floor up because I was nervous. I never told any of my friends that I was going to go do stand-up comedy. And here, these motherfucking bitches was already at the comedy show ready to watch Just Hilarious. So I snuck into the damn show, watched the show, um, and Jess would, like, ask questions. And I thought you were supposed to answer, which I think I brought this up on the last episode that is called heckling. So I was like, oh, this isn't, that's not what I was supposed to do. Well, they put me out. Shout out to my boy, Damian Robinson. He was like, look, Aaliyah, come back next Thursday. I got you. Get your shit together. I was like, all right, cool. Left that night, caught a DUI, and huh, ain't drink and drive since, okay? Um, so that's how I started comedy. Um, the, the next Thursday I went on stage, everybody loved it. We had a good time, but I ended up pregnant. And then I was like, oh, I don't want to do comedy. Like it wasn't, it just, I didn't even want to be pregnant. I was like, what the fuck? Like I'm not in the mood for this shit. Um, but I only had one child at the time. So I was like, well, let me just go ahead and have this baby and you know, we'll go from there. Um, I had the baby and a couple people were like, when are you coming back to do comedy? When are you coming back to do comedy? And I just was like, I don't know. And then I, I went, I came back. And then they were like, you drink too much. You can't be drinking and on the stage and all wild. And I'm like, yo, these people are really trying to change me. And I'm not, I'm not okay with that. So I was like, listen, y'all can have this shit. But then as I started getting into it and people really started rocking and supporting me, I was like, oh, friend, you got this. I ended up running into um, Tina Graham, which is the godmother of comedy. She's the one that helped start off Comedy Jam, Def Jam, stuff like that, all the comedies back in the day. Um, and she seen me and she was like, you are the it girl. And I was like, well, first of all, who is she? Because I didn't know who she was. And everybody was like scrambling, Tina Graham's coming in the building. And I'm like, well, what is going on? Because mind you, I didn't have a background of comedy. So we talked and she just told me, like, as long as I practice my craft, she was like, you're going to be amazing. And I was like, well, thank you. You know, I'm very humble, very, very humble Um, from where I was then to where I am now. I am so grateful. And it is nobody but God, baby. Okay. Um, So that's how I started comedy. Now I do it. Now I got merch. Now I got a podcast. Now I got a following. Um, I have people from the Internet come to the shows, the, the live shows, and we have a good time. Um, some people ask, how do I come up with my material? Nigga, my life is material. (laughs) Like, um, I'm still learning funny. Um, like I said, I mentioned on the last episode, I don't know if it's funny if you don't tell me it's funny. Like, I don't just create, I mean, I do create shit that's like, oh, that is funny, but it's normally a thought. It's not like me really punching the pen and paper, trying to figure out what's going to make you guys laugh. That's not me. I'm very natural. I don't try to make you guys laugh unless I am on stage. If I am on stage, we're going to have a ball because this is material that I practice and I know it's going to hit. So that's kind of um, how I get my material. Um, A lot of people also ask me, like, what is the hardest part about comedy? And it's the journey. Um, Y'all know I started the journey after I lost my best friend. Well, two years into that, I lost my little brother. And that shit fucked me all the way up. It fucked me up so bad that I couldn't, I could not grieve. There was no way I could grieve. I I couldn't have the time to sit down and be sad. I was like, I gotta go. His death made me realize that life is not promised and today can be the last day. And before he passed, Jelani Sims, um, rest in peace brother before he passed i was on the phone with him about not even a 
a week, maybe a couple days ago. He was telling me how he was about to go to a trip and, you know, how what he was doing to better his life. And I sat there on that phone and I told my little brother, I said, baby, bro, you can do whatever it is that you want to do. You know why? You're 26 and you have time. Like, I'm just starting my life and I'm 30. And here we are, not even a month or two later, he dies. So that shit, I don't even want to talk about because that shit still fucks with me. And that, and it just bothers me because this is the conversation I had with him. I'm like, listen, you, you got time, but he didn't. So to end it on this note, time waits for nobody. Do what you need to do. If you have a gift, share that gift. I don't know what the hell is going to come out of this podcast, but I know that I'm not the only one going through shit. Some people may be going through similar. Some people may be going through worse, but I'm going to share my story and I hope that you guys can learn something from my story, learn how to get it. Life is going life and death is going to come. Time is going to tick. So you got to, I'm trying to make it rhyme and it's not... It's not given, but you guys know what I mean. So this podcast lasted, this episode lasted a little longer than what I expected. Um, I'm just going to drill down to some of the other things just so that I can get it out so I don't have to backtrack to this podcast. Every Sunday is when I'm going to drop the podcast. I would like to drop it every Sunday night so that you guys can have it throughout the week. Um, I would like to do roundtables. Um every Friday. I'm going to see how that goes. We don't know right now. I'm trying to get my money up. So bear with me. Um, I do post topics and subjects on Facebook and Instagram. So if you're following me there, that's the place to be because we are always conversating and chatting. I go live every Monday on YouTube. So catch me there in the morning, 9 a.m. Um, some of my favorite comedians is Miss Pat, Shirley Underwood, Dominique. Those are my female comedians. I love them. Um, some people also ask why am I single because I'm working on myself. Um, Self-love and motivation and mental health is something that I'm really big on. So we're going to talk about it. I'm not going to say we're going to learn about it because I'm learning, but we're going to talk about it. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you want to give any feedback, if you have a topic next week, next Sunday, we're going to drop the next podcast. We are going to have a special guest. I am going to make a promo about it. Please hit that like, follow, drop a note. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for following me. I really love y'all. Shout out to all the support. And one day at a time, we're going to grind. That's it. Don't stress it. You got this. I hope everybody has a great week. Peace, blessings, nothing but happiness. This is Chatting with Aaliyah.